mark. So God used that dissension to send off another mission team. So what about love toward the unbeliever? Because my brother and sister don't talk, and they don't think that I should talk to that one because the other one doesn't. And I say, because I love you both. That's right. All right. So how does it work for an unbeliever? Or is it... Unbelievers don't love lost people. They don't have they don't have the love of God inside them. Right. Yeah. But our love toward them. You will get a person our love towards them will come automatically when you get saved, because you have that burden for the lost. You have that love you want to see them saved. Yeah. There's that burden. Yeah. That you know, Jesus taught that. You know, look into the white, the fields, the harvest is plentiful, but there's very few what? Labors. Yeah. That's why you came. Amen. Amen. All right, 1 John 5, 4, by overcoming the world. That's a proof that you know you're saved. You're overcoming the world. The world's not overcoming you. You're overcoming the world. All right? And uh, I'll tell you, one of the, one of the, I think one of the saddest things with a born-again believer, if he says he's truly saved but he lives for the world, that is confusing to lost people. They look at that and say, that's a Christian. They do what I do. They act like me. They talk like me. They do the things I do. And they say they're born again. That's why it's so important. We have to be different. Whatever the world does, we have to try to do the opposite. All right? We have to. We have to. Because we cannot. we got to show them something different. All right? So, overcoming the world. 1 John 5, 18, by keeping himself, all right, pure and holy. That's very important, you keep yourself pure and holy. And then also 1 John 3, 9, by possessing the divine seed or the nature. God's nature dwells in us. That's how we know we're saved. All right, keeping ourselves pure, overcoming the world, loving believers, not practicing sin, doing righteous acts. Those are pretty good signs. That you're saved if you can do this, if you practice these things. Because unsaved people don't do this stuff. Okay? You know, un all unsaved people do, they live for me, myself, and I. What, they get all the gusto they can get, and then they die, and they say, that's it. Unholy you know? trinity, right? Yeah. Myself and I. That's it. Yep, the unholy, that's good. Yeah. Unholy trinity, yeah. And when they get there, they go, whoops. They go, whoops, big mistake, yeah. Well, since I've been saved, a lot of these things just come naturally because when I do not, or should I say, when I do not do a lot of what we're reading, mm -hmm. I feel the Holy Spirit clicking my pulse. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I, I mean, a lot of this stuff shouldn't have to be taught to somebody who's saved. Shouldn't, but 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 we. If they the, follow their conscience. Yeah, the Holy Spirit is a great uh, convictor of sin. So. But it's affirmation. Yeah. Well, um, yes. And, yeah. You know, and and it, and it, it lifts you up. That yeah, okay, you're you're doing it right, even though things are crumbling around you. Keep keep up the good fight. Keep know? up the good fight, and the Holy Spirit, according to John, is always going to convict you of sin. So you're always growing. You're always, uh, there's always something that God is, is going to reveal to us so that we can be more like Jesus. There's always something there. And that's going to continue until you die. Not one of us is going to be perfect. We're always going to battle this flesh until Jesus comes or we die, one of the two. But every time the Holy Spirit convicts us and shows us things and then we work on it, praise the Lord. The key is that we try to work on it. And if we don't try to work on it, then there is, James says, a sin unto death. God will take you home. Remember Paul said, that was one of his biggest fears. He said, I don't want to be a castaway. That word, Greek word castaway means to be put on the shelf. Paul says, I don't, want to, I don't want God to take me home, put me on the shelf where I can't be used anymore. He feared that. And there are Christians that God takes home early because they don't care about anything. And they're a bad testimony, and God takes them home. Yeah, I, think he does, I believe firmly he does that. He'll yeah. take them home and say, you're not getting this right, you're coming back. Exactly. He has to, because yeah. it's, a, it's a bad testimony for, for an unsaved world. 
They look at that and say, that's a Christian? And God says, okay, I've warned you, I've convicted you. Since you're not going to change, boom, he'll take, he'll take you home. He'll take you home. And it uh, shouldn't be that way, but it happens. And, okay, First John chapter 5, verse 1, you see this uh, new birth and the belief. The first proof of the new birth is this, according to verse 1, believing that Jesus is the Christ. That's the very first proof you know you're born again. The word Christ here means Messiah, anointed one. Jesus is the Son of God, anointed to be the Savior of the world. The person who believes that Jesus is the anointed one of God, that he was sent into the world to save mankind, that person is given a new birth by God. You have to believe he's the Son of God. You have to believe he's God in the flesh. Amen? Amen. And that's very important because there's a lot of cults out there and a lot of religions that do not believe this, though they claim they're born again. A Mormon will hit your door. You say, you're born again? They'll say yes. A Jehovah Witness, you're born again? They'll tell you yes. All those cults will. But then you have to say, oh, do you believe that Jesus Christ is God? Nope. Then you're not born again, according to 1 John 5.1. You have to believe Jesus is the Savior of the world. The Bible says in John 3, 5, remember? Jesus said, sent him, Verily, verily, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? So he thought, Oh, I've got to be born fleshly all over again. No, no. Except the man be born of the water of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Ephesians 4, 24, that you, be, that you put on the new man. The new man. It's very important. Which is after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Colossians 3, 10. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So it's very important that a person believes that Jesus Christ is God. And that's why it says here in the in very first verse, I want you to note two sufficient facts here. Number one, a person who is born of God loves God. All right? And everyone, look at verse 1, that love with him and be, begat love with him also. How in the world can a person claim to be born again and they don't love God? Now, that's an oxymoron. I've ever heard. You, you just can't do that. I've, I, you know, and I, I, I've talked to, quote, born again believers. They, they actually don't love God. They love the world better. I've, I've had Christians tell me, I hate God. Whoa. You better be careful what you're saying. <laughs> man, I'm a, yeah, you, man, a lot. You cannot be a believer and hate God. Yeah, are they really born again? I don't know. Uh, you know, that's where you, you know, you can't just, they could be so backslidden so bad that they, they actually verbalize them but really don't mean it. I've seen believers do that. I well, you know, I'm sorry. I, you know, I said that. I really didn't mean it. You know, but but they actually hate God. I think they look at the worldly troubles and they think that that's of God. They think that you know the murders of children, the all the badness. They think that that is like how would God make that happen? So then they they say that they hate God because yeah. Well, in, watch, in watching that uh, comedian, that when the black guy lost his daughter, now I think if I'm right, now he went through up that, but I don't think he ever hated God through it. No, he he got disappointed. He questioned God. He, you know, his daughter died at three years old like that. But but I noticed this, he never once said he hated God. 
And, and I think that's a true test if you're born again. Whatever enters your life, if you really in your heart say you hate God, there's something drastically wrong there.